Okay, so I hope you have understood what is being done on the site, right? First, you mark the edges of your site 30, 40. You, you secure all those points. Okay, once you have secured those points, we'll start marking the offsets for your grids. So we have marked our offset of 1 feet 9 inches and then start, we start marking our grids over here. After that, what I'll do, I'll mark the grids in the, we have marked the grids in which direction? X direction. Now I have to mark my grids in the Y direction also. So I'll come from the bottom and if I open up the drawings, you can see the offset is 1 feet 3 inches. Okay, so this is for what? This is for our grids. Okay, don't confuse grids and the column. Okay, column marking is different. This grid marking is different. So very first step is what? Grid marking we have to do. So I'll take 1 feet 3 inches offset over here. I'll come back, use this a particular tool. Uh, I'll come on, sir, I'll mark 1 feet 3 inches. After marking 1 feet 3 inches, let me just minimize this. After 1 feet 3 inches, what do we have? We have got 10 feet over here. Let me zoom in. I'll go 10 feet on top. Okay, then 10 feet 6 inches we have. So I'll come over here, mark 10 feet 6 inches. Okay, then I have got 16 feet 6 inches. So I'll come over here and mark 16 feet 6 inches. Okay, after which I have got 1 feet 9 inches again. If you see here 1 feet 9 inches. So we have got 1 feet 9 inches over there. Alright, so let me just open this up again. If you want to see the distance, I told you how, do, how we can do it. Just use this particular tool and just check out the distance, 1 feet 9 inches. Okay, so let me just erase this for now because it will become too cluttered again. We don't need all this information. Okay, this 1 feet 9 inches, 1 feet 9 inches. Let, let me keep the middle parts, okay. So like this it will look. I'll just go ahead and... Uh, check the sizes again so from here to here it's supposed to be how much 10 feet then from here to here it's supposed to be almost 10 feet 6 inches then last is 16 feet 6 inches okay so you secure all these lines whatever you're seeing here right as i have already shown it to you how it looks okay you have got all these strings on the side again this is being done with hand manually okay many people nowadays tend to use your uh, total station and everything okay at, at that point of time you don't need to mark all this you just mark the points on the side that's a different approach okay so you'll mark all the strings on the line like the way i have shown you in sketchup the same thing you will do on the side also after all of this marking is done then as i showed you in the pin what i supposed to do i have marked my grids now okay the next thing that i have to mark is footings so how will i mark my footings from this edge i have to take the distance so i'll just come over here and i will show it to you so what is the distance from this edge it is 5 feet and this is 5 feet. So I'll just come on the side and I'll just start marking my footing. So it will be 5 feet comma 5 feet enter. So you can see this is our very first footing. Okay, if you want to see the distance, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead. I'll just mark 5 feet from here to here. Then I'll mark 5 feet from this point to this point. Okay, then I have to mark one more footing. So I'll come over here. I'll mark. Again, it is, I think, 5 feet, comma, 5 feet, enter. And I have to measure the distance, 5 feet and 5 feet. Okay, this corner footing is there, right? I have a video of this. I'll show it to you, how they have marked all the footing on site. So if you go over there, and you can see here what they are doing. They are taking the distance from what they are taking, the edge of the boundary. So from the edge of the boundary, they are taking the 5 feet distance. And then they'll take the white powder and they will mark the point okay again this is uh, as accurate as possible okay because once you do the excavation and everything the excavated part should be five feet and five feet all right so they have already taken the distance from here to here as five feet and then from that point they'll mark five feet over here okay let's close this then let's come back over here. So this is very easy, very simple to mark, right? 5 feet and 5 feet. We have easily marked this. Okay. So the next question comes, how will I mark the footings that are there in the middle portion? So this particular footing. So how will I mark this? So if you see here, this is where the grids come into the play. Okay. So from the grid C, I have to go 2 feet 6 inches in the one direction. After getting this point, from this point, I'll mark 6 feet 6 inches. And I'll come down as 6 feet 6 inches. Okay. So let me explain what happens on the side. So this is the grid, right? So at this grid, what I'll do, I'll go for a, for a, for explanation purpose, I'll go for this tool. I'll go here. I'll mark what distance? 2 feet, 6 inches, I'll mark a distance. Okay. So once I have marked this, I should be able to select it. So you can see, this is the distance of my one side of the footing. 
so once i get the edge i'll go over here i'll select it from here i'll draw how much 6 feet 6 inches comma 6 feet 6 inches enter okay so like this is supposed to mark so on side what i'll do i'll go from this grid i'll take a tape of 2 feet 6 inches over here okay i'll take a tape of 2 feet 6 inches over here i'll get this point and from this point i can go ahead and mark 6 feet 6 inches either you do that or you minus it and get this distance and mark the distance okay so this you have to mark then you have to mark this also as 6 feet 6 inches something like this so that is why marking of ridges is very important because without the reference of grids you can mark the edges of the edge, edge footings but you can't mark the middle footings and all it will be very difficult okay so let me just erase this because on the bottom we have it anyway all right So we have marked the top three footings we have marked. All right, so let me just look at this in a different diagonal and you should be able to see how it looks on the side. Okay, I'll show you one more video now. There is complete footing marking that was done. And you can see it again starts from the corner. And the very first foot, the footings are marked over here. You can see, right? All the footings were marked one by one like this only on the side. If you want to 2x the speed, you can 2x the speed now. And very quickly just watch the entire place. See, this area now is not properly clean because we know the footing was not going to come there anyway. So what did the people do? They just left the clutter over here. Okay. But wherever the footing is supposed to be marked, they have cleaned it as neatly as possible. Okay. This is the footing that we have marked, right? I just showed you how to mark this footing on site. This, this is that particular footing. Okay, then we have the corner footing over there and then the rest of the footings. So if you see, no one has marked column anywhere yet. They have just marked the footings. Alright, so I hope you have understood how the very first step that is grid marking and the footing marking is carried out on the side. It is very simple as I said, right? There is nothing too difficult about this. The only thing is exposure is required. So we mark the grids first. We secured all our grids. How do we secure our grids? By using rebars like this on the side. So we dug the rebars in and we pulled the strings out. Okay, we pulled the, uh, you know, the particular strings and we attach it over here. Okay, and that's what we did. Now, what is the importance of this particular angle? Let me just talk to it, uh, talk about it. Let me just take you to AutoCAD. Okay, so this is basically my site, right? 30 feet and 40 feet site that I have here. So how do I know that this angle, this line and this line are at right angles to each other? Okay, the angle between this line and this line is 90 degrees. So what I will basically have to do is, if I take you to the paint option, okay? So what I'll do on site, I'll go 3 feet in this direction. Okay, I'll go 3 feet in th this direction. And then I'll go 4 feet in this direction. How much am I going? Basically, I'm going 3 feet in this direction. Okay. And then I'm going 4 feet in this direction. Alright. And then what I'll do is, I'll take a string again. Like I have shown you on the side, right? How the string looks. I'll take the string or I'll take the measuring tape. And I'll go and I'll draw a line that's going from this direction to this point. Okay. From this point to this point. And the, uh, the length of this line should be how much? 5 feet. Okay, if the length of this line is 5 feet, then what I have done is properly correct the angle is at proper 90 degrees. Sometimes what happens is when you're marking on the site, for example, the edge of the boundary is not taken properly. Okay, if you see the photo, I think the second one it was there. Uh, okay, if you see, I have marked the edge of the edge also, right? I have not just taken this as my reference. Okay, even though they have put a pillar over there, I have marked my boundary edge first. Why have I done that? Okay, simple reason being because if I were to go along with that edge only and if that edge was say something like this, it was not exactly, uh, you know, in a proper straight line, it was something like this. Okay, and then I would go three feet in this direction. Okay, and then I would go say, say around four feet, then just draw a line like this. Okay, my boundary line, let us say this was, it was something like this. All right, and uh, let us say it was something like this. So what I'll do on the side, on the side, I'll take three feet in this direction. 
okay and then i'll take four feet in, in this direction along the same length okay and then what happens is this will be three feet okay we'll measure on one side this will be three feet and this will be four feet okay but what happens when i take a take a tape and try to measure this what will be this value this will be slightly greater than five feet okay it will be greater than how much five feet so the time i'll get to know that i'm not an exactly right angle okay see your plot can be anything or your plot can look in various ways possible there is no problem with that your plot might look even something like this we have a plot that looks something like this recently we were working on a project the plot was like this but your construction cannot be in the same way right your construction will always be rectangular in nature it looks something like this okay your construction will be like this only all right so you have to be very careful that whatever edges you have they are 90 degrees to each other okay so that is why this 3 4 5 method is used to make sure that the grids that you are marking on site are in a straight line and to make sure that they are in straight line what do we do we use this particular instrument okay so if you see this is basically uh, four this is basically three and the distance between this to be should be proper okay this three four five method is what we generally use on site and we use in all the four corners okay if i take you to paint this corner this corner this corner and this corner we have to do it on all the four corners to make sure that is properly done and one more thing what do we do is this is 30 feet this is 40 feet right so the distance between this and this should be how much just escape this okay it should be 50 feet we will measure this also on site the 50 feet option right we actually did measure for this particular project we did measure this distance to be 50 feet properly it is there or not to make sure that the entire project is rectangular in nature okay having 90 degrees edges so this is all why we use this particular given instrument so i hope you have understood so by using this grids option and everything we have to mark all the other options also so if i come back to the uh, project at hand next footing is basically what this is six feet six inches right so from this particular grid what i'll do i'll mark two feet six inches on top okay i'll just show it to you so that if you have anyone has a doubt it will be cleared so what i'll do i'll go this is my grid from this grid i have to go how much i have to go two feet six inches on the top so i'll just come over here i'll go two feet six inches on the top okay so let's go and select that all right once that is done i'll take the topmost part and then i'll mark six feet six inches comma six feet six inches so it looks something like this and then i have to take the measuring tape basically on the side and mark by using the measuring tape so let me just see if i have taken proper distance or not two feet six inches i have taken this was six feet six inches okay and this was six feet six inches something like this okay every single footing that you are seeing on the side we have to cross check it we checked all the four corners to, uh, for it to be exactly 90 degrees after doing that check what did we do uh, we mentioned we may we check that the distance from this edge to this corner to this corner is 50 or not after doing that we went and cross verified each and every footing on the side because it is very important okay if you uh, mark the wrong grids then entire project will become wrong so marking of grids though it is very simple see there is nothing difficult in this right just taking up tape just marking the points okay though it is not difficult it is very easy to go wrong in initially if you have no experience okay so like this we have to mark all these footings in the next class i'll show you how the excavation process is taken care of on the site okay we have a couple of videos on excavation also after excavation we will talk about the next of the steps okay again let me emphasize on this particular point that this is not very difficult we are not doing differentiation or uh, integration and all here it is very simple it is simple math that we are doing and we are marking the points on the site okay so like this you're supposed to do and i gave you some uh, tips also right in the site marking that you have to use this right angle three four five method and make sure that the site that you are working on is exactly having 90 degrees edges or not okay so that's all for this class see you guys in the next class thank you